thank you all for taking your time to join this conference. Let me acknowledge the earlier speakers. Uh, a lot of information has been shared here. And I believe once we take it and run with it, we are going to transform our lives and also transform the lives of the people around us. So let me try and share my screen. I hope you can see my screen now. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Great. So I'm speaking on mastering your finances like a champion. So when I had the invite to speak at this summit, I was looking at the definition for champion. And Merriam Webster defined a champion as someone marked, someone who showed marked superiority. And so they are ahead of things. They know what they are about. And you can attest to that fact that all the speakers who spoke earlier, uh, they are champion in their various field of operations. And so as a champion, and everyone on this call or everyone in this summit is a champion. And so as a champion, how do you get ahead of your finances? How do you take control of your finances? And so about two weeks ago, I launched my YouTube channel. And so if you want to know more about managing money, multiplying money and making money, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Peter Sarinyako. And let's, let's keep the conversation going. Let's keep the money conversation going. Thank you very much. So dear champion, are you managing your finances or your finances are managing you? This is my first question that I want to ask. Are you managing your finances as a champion or your finances are managing you? If your finances are managing you, then you are not on top of your finances. And so you may not be a champion yet. But if you are managing your finances, that means you are exhibiting or showing the qualities of a champion. And so it is important for each and every one of us to take absolute control of our finances. And so we have a souvenir that will tell you if you are managing your finances or your finances are managing you. And so after my presentation, I will share these slides with the organizers. So when you get these slides, you can easily take the online survey and that will tell you if you are managing your finances or your finances are managing you. And so risk just shows that each one of us, we, we have a phobia in one aspect of life or the other. And for most people, when you raise money conversations, their blood pressure goes up. And so my question is, which area of your personal finances frustrates you the most? Is it about dealing with debt? Is it about tracking your net worth? Is it about tax preparation? For some, it's about insurance and risk management. And so we may all have one area of our finances where we, we find it difficult. And so at the end of this presentation, I will make sure I, I break some of these terms down so you can actually master your finances as the champion that you are. And so we have developed a systematic approach that we think will benefit each and every one. And so once you understand the systematic approach, you will be able to make informed financial decisions. You will have the best chances to secure your financial future. And you will also know the secret to smart money management. And so we call this the foundation to financial awareness and financial literacy. And we believe once you get to understand these principles or these concepts, you will be able to master your personal finance. So now let's go into them. What, what are these elements or what does this systematic approach entails? So the systematic approach, we have two sides. We have getting organized and then we have financial planning. 
So now let's go into getting organized. Getting organized has four elements under, under it. We have paperwork, we have network, we have cash flow, and we have employment benefits. We believe once you understand these concepts and get yourself organized, you can actually plan your finances and win like a champion. But if you don't understand this concept, it will be difficult to even start planning your finances. And so mostly when people come to me as a financial coach and they want to know what kind of investment should I start? What are some of the investments I can invest in? I always tell them, first and foremost, we need to make sure you are financially organized before we can even start investing. And so it is important for you to get yourself financially organized. So talking about paperwork, paperwork from the very moment you were giving birth to, you were given a birth certificate. Since that time, anytime you engage in a financial contract or a financial transaction, you either get a utility bill, you either get a receipt, you either get a contract. And so where do you keep all these financial documents? You have opened an investment account. Your investment certificate, where do you keep these investment certificates? You have buy a land. You have a contract that covers the land. Where do you keep this contract? You pay your utilities. Where do you keep your utility bills? And so for you to master your money or master your finances like a champion, it is important for you to organize your paperwork, your investment certificate, your bank statement, your utility bills, insurance policies, rent contract agreements, all these vital financial documents should be organized. And now it's even easier. You can just take a picture with your phone and put all these documents into a digital folder. You can place them in a Dropbox, a Google Drive and all that, so that you can always make reference to them. Let me share this quick story with you. So there was one time I paid my utilities in my in my house and then about three weeks uh, three weeks after that my landlord came to me and he said peter you haven't paid your utilities for this number of weeks then i just went back into my folder took my receipt and then gave it to him it was like oh sorry and so if you don't keep track of your financial documents you will incur more than you should you will even pay things twice because you don't have any reference or any proof. And so the first thing as a champion you need to do is to make sure all your financial documents are in place. And so life is great when your paperwork are in place. It's very important. The second thing you need to do is to know your net worth. For you to get financially organized, you need to know your net worth. Your net worth are the things you own and the things you owe. And so the difference between what you own and what you owe will give you your net worth. What you owe are your assets, things that have monetary value. And so in making sure you master your finances, you need to track all your assets. And assets, we have two forms of assets. We have personal assets. That's your personal properties. It might be your car the land you have, your computers, you have to track them because they have monetary value. And then we have financial assets, the investments you have, insurance policies, all other assets, cash at bank, they are all financial assets. So make sure you have tracked your personal assets, you have tracked your financial assets, and that will give you your total assets. Then what you owe, your financial obligations, they are your liabilities, the things you owe others. So you need to list all your financial obligations, the loan, the uh, every, every, every aspect. If you, are, if you are paying car mortgage, if, if you took a loan to buy a car and then you are paying installments, you have to list that. So you need to know all your financial obligations. So the difference between your asset and your liabilities will give you your net worth. So that is how much you are worth. And so if you have an asset, let's say you have a land and the land worth at, let's say, 50,000 
Ghana cities, or let me use dollars, since we are from different countries and different continents. So you have $50,000 worth of land. And then you took a loan, let's say $40,000 to buy that land. In this case, you don't tell yourself, I have a $50,000 worth of land. You need to take out the liability, the loan. And so $40,000 minus $50,000 will give you $10,000. And so when you're talking about your net worth, your actual net worth is $10,000. And so you need to track the two. Why should you track your net worth? Why should you know your net worth? Regardless of your financial situation, Knowing your net worth can help you evaluate your current financial health and plan for the future. Because you want to plan for the future, because you want to master your money, you need to know your assets and your liabilities. This will help you make an informed decisions. If you know your financial obligations, that will inform you if you have to pay off that obligation. So it's very important. And then you should also make sure you are tracking your net worth annually it should be an annual exercise annual exercise now let's move so benjamin franklin said something that is i think it's really important for us to know your network to the world is usually determined by what remains after your bad habits are subtracted from the good ones and so this is to the world your net worth to the world, your benefit to the world is what remains after your bad habits is subtracted from the good ones. So what are the good things you are giving out to the world? And what are the bad things? You need to, you can, you need to also assess that and make sure you are always providing good to, to, to the world. Another thing you need to do is to assess your cash flow or track your cash flow. Your cash flow is your income versus your expenditure. So how is your cash flowing? Where is your income coming from? And where is your money going? So you need to track all your income and track all your expenditure. The difference will give you your cash flow statement. And for most people, their only source of income is themselves. And so if they work at a, they have a job at the end of the month, once they get paid, that is their only source of income. And so if something happens, let's say COVID, let's say we are, if we have COVID 24, 2024, and employers are saying they are going to lay off some workers, once they lose that job, their income ceases. And so in assessing your cash flow statement, you need to also look at multiple streams of income. So this is where you should always make sure you are not depending on one source of income. Because the average millionaire has seven sources of income. And so for you to master your money like a champion, you need to create multiple streams of income. You don't need to depend on one source of income. You need to make sure you have multiple sources. So if one source of income sees this, there are other sources that can, that can help you out. And here, so I want to make this comment that, yes, sometimes when you talk about multiple streams of income, people think you want them to stop their work and start their own businesses that is not what we, we, we are trying to say not everyone can start a business but all of us can invest and so there are various ways you can put your money to work there are various ways you can put your money to work so you can create multiple streams of income very important so your income versus your expenditure the difference will give you your cash flow statement it's very important to get organized with that benjamin franklin also says something here Beware of little expenses. A small leak can sink a great ship. And so when we are talking about cash flow statements, mostly our expenses can give us a negative cash flow. And so you need to be aware of every little expense that you make. You need to take note of that. You need to take note of that because that can sink your entire financial foundation. Very important. The last thing you need to do to get yourself financially organized is to understand your employment benefits. And if you're a self-employed person, you need to also give yourself some benefits. Employment benefits are your hidden paychecks. And so organizations give out a lot of benefits to their employees. 
uh, transport allowance, vacation allowance, dental plan, retirement plan. These are some of the benefits that employers give out. And so you need to understand them and take maximum advantage of that. If your employer is giving, let's say, a transport allowance and you are not aware, you may be using your own money for transport and that can hinder you from achieving financial success or that can destroy your financial foundation. Monies that you could have used to invest, you may be using that for transport. Meanwhile, the employer is providing that. And so you need to be aware of your employment benefits. And so for some of us, Monday, we may have to have a meeting with our HR department to know what are the benefits they are giving their, their, their employers, employees so we can take advantage of that. So you need to understand your employment benefits and make maximum use of that. Very important. A reward cannot be valued if it is not understood. And so if your employer is giving benefits and you don't understand it, you may not utilize it. And so you need to understand your employment benefits and make sure you are taking much more advantage of that. Now, after getting yourself organized with paperwork, network, cash flow, and understanding your employment benefits, now the second aspect is financial planning. Financial planning. And so in planning your finances, the first thing you need to do is to define your financial goals. You need to have goals. And there is a huge difference between a financial goal and a financial dream. One thing I've seen is most of us, we have financial dreams. Yes, we want to start businesses. We want to travel around the world. We want to drive the latest car. We want to build the biggest apartments. They are dreams. But a financial goal is something you have planned for and working towards. Something you have planned for and working towards. And so if you are saying, I want to start a business, you know the kind of business you want to start. You know how much you need to start the business. And so we should, we should have goals instead of having dreams. Understanding goals. So you need to know what is really important to you if you are defining your financial goal. Know what is important to you. Know what type of work you enjoy doing. And so if I enjoy public speaking, in drafting my goals, I should make provisions for public speaking as well. Where do you want to live in three years, in five years, in 10 years? Yes, maybe now you are living in a rented apartment. In five years' time, do you want to build your whole own house? So you need to set goals for all these items. Where do you want to be financially in three years, in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years? So maybe now you are earning four-figure income or you are earning five-figure income. Maybe in five years, you want to be earning six-figure income, ten-figure income. And so you need to set goals according to where you want to be financially. It's very important. How much time do you want to give to your work, your case, your spouse, yourself, your interest, your community? Set goals for that. Set goals for that. When do you want to retire from your current work? You need to set goals for that. What are your gate and legacy plans? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? If you want to be someone who wants to support other people in your community, that will also inform the kind of money you have to make. So it's very important to know all this and define them accordingly. And in defining your goals too, you need to you need to define smart goals. So your goals need to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and with time. Very important. You also need to break your goals down into short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals, depending on, on your objectives. So it's very important when we are setting our goals. So I have here, this is a quote that is coming from me, there is a huge difference between a financial dream and a financial goal. A financial dream is something we hope for. A financial goal is something we have planned for. And so once you move from hoping to planning, then you are setting goals. Very important. 
after setting your financial goals in planning your finances and for you to win like a champion you need to understand and plan for financial independence and retirement yes financial independence is getting to a point where you don't depend on anyone for your financial resources you have accumulated enough wealth that you don't necessarily need to go to work so your life can move on and a retirement is getting to a point where you want to retire from active work and so for young people mostly young people when you talk to them about retirement they don't want to hear about it we understand but we need to be financially independent because without financial independence it will be difficult to plan for your retirement and so let's prioritize our financial independence and also let's think about the future because now you may have all the strengths you may have the capacity the ability to go out there work and make money by the time it's coming you will have to retire your strength will reduce even if you don't want to retire the system will retire you so for example in ghana once you hit 60 years the system will retire you and so you need to factor all this into into consideration when you are planning for 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 your financial independence and retirement and then I, there is this rule that i want you to know how long it will take to double your income on or any principal so if you are doing an investment and let's say you have ten thousand dollars in an investment account how long will it take for that investment to double and so you need to divide that by 72. You need to divide 72 by your rate of return. So let's say if you have $10,000 and you are making 8% on that amount, it will take you nine years for that to double. Yes. So that's the rule of 72. It will take you divide 72 by the rate of return to know how much you want your income to double. And then there is this. We need to understand the time value of money and compounding. And so I have a quick question here. You can drop your answer in the chat box. Yes, after that, I, I will send the response to Mr. Ibrahim to share. So I'm going to give out a check right now. Yes, I have a check for $1 million. And so if you want a check for $1 million, you can drop your answer in the chat bo box. After that, I'll give the check to Mr. Ibrahim to give it to you. My second option is I have a check for a dollar doubled each day for 30 days. The first option is a check for $1 million. The second option is a check for a dollar doubled each day for 30 days. But here is the rule. For check one, I'll give it to you right away. For check two, you have to wait for 30 days to get access to that check. Which one are you going for? Which one are you going for? Yes. I can see your option two. Yeah, so you can drop you can drop your answer in the chat box and I'll make this check available. I promise. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think most of us are going for option two. Okay, so now let's 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 look at what will happen. Yes. So at the end of day 30 you will have 5.4 million dollars if you waited for 30 days to get the second option what this means is that money saving and investing even a little can make a huge difference over time two there's power in patience and so for you to create wealth for you to multiply your money you need patience there's no investment that will you can use one million for that will give you 5.4 million in 30 days but this one it was certain that at day 30 i was going to give you that amount and so that is patience so this is the power of compounding this principle actually talks about the power of compounding money grows over time money grows over time so if you're doing an investment make sure you are rolling out up your money yes once you do an investment keep rolling that investment and over time you have 
huge amount of money in your in your account now let's go to another another aspect the need to prioritize your major expenditures the need to prioritize your major expenditures and so there are certain major expenditure items that you you can't just take money from your bank account and go and do them you need to forward think you need to plan ahead so what are your major expenditures have you prioritized them so buying a car you can't just go into your account and take money to go out there and buy a car you need to do some forward thinking starting a business you need to think through before you start a business and so we need to prioritize our major expenditures we need to plan for them before we do them even getting married even uh, pursuing higher education you need to think through them you can't just wake up one day and say i want to do my masters i want to do my phd because you need money to do that and so you need to plan for them before you start doing that so you, you need to plan for your major expenditure if you want to master your money or master your finances another element is for you to understand investing if you want to win the game of money if you want to master your finances like a champion you need to understand investing and so investing is a lifelong task yes investing is towards the future so most like tell people we save with the intention to spend money but we invest with the intention to earn money you are putting your money at risk so you can earn additional income that is investment but before you put your money at risk there are certain key elements you need to know how investments earn money how investments earn money so how do you want your investment to earn you money are you looking for income or you are looking for growth that will determine what kind of investment you want to do asset allocation and asset classes what kind of assets what kind of in industry do you want to put your money in so you need to know the kind of assets classes asset allocation you want to you want to put your money in do you want to invest in agribusiness do you want to invest in real estate do you want to invest in telecommunication business do you want to go into groceries food business you need to you need to think through before you put your money at rate. and mostly when you go to the banks or financial institutions they invest in some of these industries so one question i i encourage my client to ask is where do you invest our money are you investing in oil and gas and so if there is a decision about oil and gas then i can take decision for myself because every decision that government take every decision that political decisions economic decisions will affect your investment and so if you're investing in let's say securities and government is saying i'm going to apply haircut definitely it is going to affect your investment so you need to know how you want to allocate your assets and how you want to uh, classify your assets so this is where diversification needs to come in diversify your income or your investment don't put all your eggs in one basket don't put all your money in securities and so when government is applying haircuts then you'll be screaming you need to diversify put some in food businesses put some in income generating assets so every time you have diversification you need to also you need to understand investment risk and target rate of return always remember the higher the reward, the higher the risk. The lower the reward, the lower the risk. Yes. And so if you're looking for high risk investment or high profit, then you have high risk. If an investment house comes to you and say, I'll give you 60% per annum, that means you stand 60% chance of losing your money. So you need to understand that. You need to understand your risk appetite. For most people, when they lose $10, they will cry the entire day. But someone can lose fifty, ten thousand dollars and they are okay. That means they have high risk appetite. So you need to understand that that will inform your investment decision. So what are some good investment strategies? After taking all these things into consideration, now you can go into investment with confidence. Yes, that if there is a haircut somewhere, I know the decision that I'm taking. And so that will not affect me. 
be patient. If a get rich quick scheme seems too good to be true, it is probably so. And so in investing, patience is key. If you follow the get rich quick schemes, you might lose your money. Yes. And so this quote is saying that if a get rich quick scheme seems too good to be true, if something seems too good to be true, mm, this one there, then you have to, you have to, you have to be be aware of that. Yes, so you don't fall victim to Ponzi schemes and all that. The next thing I'll talk about is understanding insurance and risk management. Very important when you are planning your finances. You need to understand insurance and risk management. What is insurance? Insurance basically provides protection against possible eventuality. And so let's say you have a car. Because you know the car might hit something or might involve in an accident, let me secure that. So when that happens, an insurance company will come in and say, I am taking care of all the costs involved. Because you know, you can fall sick. Yes, accidents can happen. Let me insure my life. So if I'm no more, my family don't go through that process or that suffering. So you need to know, do you need life insurance? You need to ask yourself, how much do you need? Are you paying too much for your car insurance? So there are a lot of questions you need to ask yourself about insurance. So mostly, I tell people, don't follow what people are saying. Walk to the insurance company, sit down with them, ask relevant questions, get to understand their policies before you sign on to any insurance. Read the terms and conditions. One thing is that most people do not read the terms and conditions. And so they don't know what is happening. And then they will default on the insurance payment or premiums. And then the insurance company will say, we are not giving you the money because you there was a default somewhere. But if you read the policies, if you read the terms and conditions, you will keep to it and you can take the insurance company on if they are not honoring their part of the, of the consideration. So it's important for you to understand insurance and use insurance and risk management to protect yourself your family, your loved ones, and your world. Understand tax planning. Yes, there are two things that are certain in life. We will all die and we will all pay taxes. Yes, so you need to understand taxes. And there are ways you can minimize tax obligations. So you need to learn that. You need to make sure you understand taxes. If you need to see a tax professional for you to understand taxes, it is important. We are talking about collaboration. So financial planning, you may need to collaborate with other professionals. Collaborate with an accountant, tax professional, insurance professional. Make sure you, you, you are collaborating with the others so you can take absolute control of your finances. And the, the last thing under this financial planning aspect is understanding estate and gifts planning. Estate and gifts planning. Do you have an up-to-date estate and gifts plan to protect yourself and your family? Do you have a will, a legal document that will protect your wealth and that will distribute your assets? There have been cases across the world where people die and their family fight over their, fight over their assets. And so you need to put a legal document down. You can even raise a document that will say, if I die, my, my body shouldn't be buried. Yes take my body to a hospital so they can use it for experiment. You can put a document down that will say 50% of my assets should go to my alma mater or my former school, should go to my community, should build a library for my community. You, you, you can put a legal document like that. And so in planning your finances, you need to think about legacy building. How do I build legacy? Succession planning. How do I leave, make a lasting impact. Even if I'm not on earth, how do I make a lasting impact? Estate and gifts planning will walk you through that and will help you put all those legal documents in place. So the only person who doesn't need an estate and gifts plan is one who lives forever. And so if you think you will live forever, then you don't need an estate plan. Don't put a world together. 
Yes, but not all of us can live forever. We will die. And so because we will die, because they are life is uncertain, we need to put legal document in place. So when we die or when something happens, it can take care of us. And did you know everyone has an estate and gifts plan? The one the government provides you or the one you create for yourself and your family. And so in most countries, even if you don't have a legal document, there are laws that can share your asset or your world. So in Ghana, when you come to Ghana, you have the Institute Succession Law, PNDC Law 111. So even if you write a will, that is what they will share your asset and your world. And that might not favor you. Maybe there's someone you want to give your asset to, but the law might not make provision for that person. So it is important while you are alive, put a will together, put a legal document together so you can share your assets. Very important. Very important. So annual financial checklist for a champion. I'm just going through them. One, always make sure you keep a things to do list. Yes. Make sure you keep a things to do list. Keep a financial calendar for your action. What you want to do in January, in February, make sure you have a financial calendar for that. Organize your paperwork, your financial documents. I spoke about that. Get an accurate picture of your net worth. What you own versus what you owe. That's your net worth. Use a workable cash flow plan. Increase your income through multiple streams of income. Save money with cost-cutting strategies. So always make sure you save money by cutting down on some of the expenses that you can choose to cut down on. Make the most of your employment benefits. So understand your employment benefits and make the most of it. Define what really matters to you. That's your goals. Yes. Understand the planning process. So when you are planning, you need to understand what you are planning for. Invest for your financial independence and retirement. Begin planning for major expenditures. If you have any major expenditure item in mind, this is the best time to begin planning for it. Develop and implement a tax reduction plan by seeing your tax professional to have a meeting with him. Review your risk management. Only purchase the insurance you and your family need. Only purchase the insurance you and your family need. And then the last one, create or update your estate and gifts plan to protect yourself and your loved ones and your loved ones. So as a champion, that's my final statement. You must always remember, you either master money or on some level, level, money masters you. You decide. You either master money or on some level, money masters you. And the decision is in your hands. Thank you very much for putting this together.